Hello, and welcome to the Mohit Show. In this video I will be covering stories from r slash dtrans, a well-moderated subreddit for people questioning, desisting, or detransitioning. I will be protecting the identities of these posters since individuals in this community have been harassed when their stories have been discussed. A text-to-speech voice is being used due to current recording difficulties. This video's first post, titled, Sexual Function Slash Pleasure After Transition Detrans Female One of the questions I've been asked about my transition slash detransition process is if there was much discussion around future sexual function as a trans adult while I was transitioning as a minor. The simple answer is there was none at all. My future sex life was too inappropriate for my doctors to explain, too much of an adult subject for anybody to try and talk to my 13-year-old self about but I was allowed to make the choice to permanently stunt and potentially even nullify it completely before I even had a chance to understand how my body worked and explore my sexuality and my natural hormones in my transition to adulthood. There's no denying that medical transition limits sexual function for both men and women, halting puberty is halting sexual development and it wasn't until I truly understood what that meant and what I was missing that I made the decision to detransition. A lot of kids are sadly already too far gone by that point either by way of surgery which can never be undone or truly convinced that this is all necessary for them to be happy. But at what cost? I was one of the lucky ones, in retrospect. I almost went through with surgery, which I would never have come back from mentally or physically. But still, I am damaged. I'll never have the body or life I should have had. And I have to learn to live with that I think that aspect of detransitioning has been the hardest to cope with, trying to learn to accept my testosterone altered body while simultaneously wanting to explore my sexuality as any 20 year old should have the freedom to do. It wasn't fair. I was not truly informed, I could not give consent to forever make myself somewhat sexually ambiguous at 13, 15, 18, or any of the ages that I should have been able to be a normal kid. I don't know why I made this post. Sometimes I feel like I'm just shouting into the wind but any advice, comment, similar experience is welcome. Not coping too well right now. From the comments. Desisted male in a similar vein, I've spent a good while coming to terms with the consequences of routine infant circumcision in the US. It really does suck knowing that there are things I will simply never experience and that my partners will miss out on. There isn't really an answer to these kinds of issues, the best anyone can do is learn to live with it. Trying to be grateful for what I do have left is hard but can be rewarding. I hope you eventually find peace, and I am truly sorry for what was done to you in the name of good medicine. Socially trans, regrets medical transition realizing that my hormonal health would always be suppressed and that my attempts to live healthily and sustainably would always be hampered by taking exogenous hormones is what got me to stop. I'm too far gone surgically to meaningfully detransition but the least I can do is let my body return to functioning on its own terms. Libido is absolutely affected, and I've noticed improvements since being off HRT. I'm really sorry you weren't given fair warning about the inevitable outcome of puberty blockers, if I've read your post right. This whole thing is so messed up for kids. Next post, titled, The New Lobotomy. Detrans female most children who are transitioning grow out of it after their natural puberty and end up being gay, lesbian or bi. In the past LG and B youth were made to get lobotomies so they could be normal. Now LGB youth are being pushed to be injected with hormones that sterilize us. I wonder if in 20 years we will view children transitioning the same way that we view lobotomies today. I know this is not worded very well, please forgive me. I just had surgery and these pain meds make it hard to put my thoughts into sentences. From the comments. Questioning own gender transition I have made that exact comparison myself. The history of medicine is full of similar examples, where experts got a big head and hurt large numbers of people. Intent or emergence, malice, or incompetence, I don't think it even effing matters, need solutions to problems caused by people with too much power. Desisted male I think SRS and minor HRT slash blockers should be banned. SRS is especially brutal and wrong, basically a wound that you have to stop from healing, every day for the rest of your life. That's F it up. Also, wrong to be medically experimenting on kids. People like Marcy Bowers talk about how kids are the future, and we have to listen to what they say, but what will the adults do when the youth who regret, grow up and hold them responsible for the experimentation? The new generations will split off into different blocks of opinion, 
What then? It's concerning how people who support medically transitioning slash puberty blocking children put kids' views on a pedestal as though they cannot be wrong or won't regret. Deleted user just look at Iran and Syria, where LGB people are literally coerced to transition. Questioning own gender transition weight, I'm confused on how this applies to bisexual people because either way, transition or no transition, there is no way for them to be considered straight, thus normal. How does transition conversion therapy work on someone attracted to both sexes? Original poster, D-trans female the transitioning isn't to get us normal, it's to get us sterile desisted yes, the parallel is many gay people have undergone lobotomy. Many gay people are identifying as trans as well and are medically transitioning. Lobotomies the gay away. Trans the gay away. Desisted I think in the future transitioning for minors will be compared to diet pills with side effects. Transitioning for minors is similar to diet pills in the sense they both are supposed to fix you and make you fit into society's standard in an unhealthy way. Diet pills is considered a quick fix for weight and transitioning is considered a quick fix for gay people, people who are unhappy with their bodies and lives. Many minors are unhappy because of either mental health conditions, upbringing, sexuality, beauty standards, gender roles, or something else, not because they're transgender. Often other things than transitioning is needed. Diet pills are also misleading because taking a pill can't replace eating healthy proper food. Transitioning should be treated like regular cosmetic surgeries where it's an age limit. I think no children under 18 should get medical transitioning because they may regret it and children aren't capable to give informed consent like adults. It's not unethical for adults to get work done since they're more mature and can consent, in my opinion. Next post, titled, I wish they'd stop pushing transitioning on everyone gender nonconforming desisted female this is the kind of thing that really pisses me off. Because it's exactly why, among other reasons, I thought I was trans, along with many others here. I was just on the clock app and came across a video of a guy basically saying he wishes he could be a girl sometimes. It was very lighthearted and funny, as in, it was obvious he wasn't dysphoric or suffering due to his maleness, he said he wanted to have acrylic nails. Q tons of comments of who's going to tell him, slash I, felt like that now I'm trans slash first denial, then Danielle slash I wanted to be pretty too, and I just had my first estrogen shot. There was even a person that responded to one of the who's going to tell him comments with her asterisk. This is what I heard almost non-stop before I desisted, only replace TikTok with YouTube and Tumblr. I responded that he can still be a man with acrylics, and they replied, but he says he literally wants to be a girl. First off, almost everyone feels like that sometimes. You'd be hard-pressed to find a single person on this planet who hasn't wished to be the opposite sex a handful of times at least. Second, he's joking. But the overwhelming majority of the comments are from people insinuating that he's trans or from trans women saying, yeah that's how I knew. But it's not a cult. But it's not about stereotypes. K. Okay. From the comments. Questioning own gender transition I feel like if we were truly progressing as a society, it wouldn't be seen as wrong for a man to just wear acrylics and still be considered a man. Not less of a man, or a trans woman, or an egg, but just a man who likes acrylics. And there's nothing wrong with being a man who likes acrylics or anything else that our society considers as for women only. Deleted user that's why I have such a problem with non-binary people. They essentially state that if you deviate from the traditional social standards of being a woman slash man you must be a new gender entirely. I can't respect that at all. It's not cool, it's not edgy, it is repulsive. Women with short hair are now automatically assumed to be non-binary and men who have effeminate features and wear makeup are suddenly no longer men. Then we have the whole dumb gimmick quote of I don't feel like a man slash woman so I'm non-binary. Last time I checked, you cannot feel like a gender. It is simply what you are. The same way I can't feel like I am a white person, or a black person, I am simply white. Just scary people are being dragged into this. I have had females in my life have to put up with being asked their pronouns simply because they don't wear feminine attire and have their hair resting past their shoulder. It is a sexist, nonsense way of looking at people in the world and I won't take part of it. Non-transgender and level-headed transsexual people, albeit rare, are being forced to adhere to this belief system which feels a lot like how rebelling against religion was once prohibited and punishable, and yet the people spreading this new ideology are somehow on the right side of things.
When has forcing anyone to subscribe to beliefs ever been the right thing to do? Desisted female I agree completely. A young queer AFAB she slash they coworker asked me my pronouns when I first started at work 100% because I had short hair. They did not ask the other people that joined after me that were more gender conforming for their pronouns, just me, because a woman having short hair now is non-binary and less proven otherwise. I get they're trying to be accommodating but I hate being singled out for physical appearance reasons. Questioning own gender transition I agree 100%. For a while I considered identifying as non-binary but kept questioning if that was really necessary and came to the conclusion that I just liked the label because it was an out. It was an out from people perceiving me as female, instead I could be neither male or female. But this isn't even realistic, because I will always be female and no number of surgeries or hormones or opposite sex clothes can change that. Digging deeper I realized I didn't want to be perceived as female because I had trauma and internalized misogyny. At this point I'm still gender non-conforming but recognize I'm a woman and nothing can change that, and there's nothing wrong with not conforming to gender norms slash stereotypes. The non-binary identity enforces gender stereotypes and norms because if you deviate from the norms of your birth gender you are told oh you must actually be, insert opposite gender, or non-binary. And that basically alienates you more because you are told you must be the opposite gender or neither gender instead of just being taught to accept yourself the way you are. The non-binary identity discourages people from being gender non-conforming and identifying with their birth sex. I think if all people who are gender non-conforming identify with their birth sex instead of as non-binary, this world would be a lot more diverse. Conformity leads to a homogenous society, and non-conformity leads to a diverse society, and I think everyone would benefit from a diverse society, with diverse thought and diverse perspectives. I hope this all makes sense it's kind of a brain dump. Original poster desisted female I can't stand non-binary either. Bunch of tryhards that think they're special for not being a stereotype. I've been asked my pronouns and it's like. Really? A short haircut and baggy pants are now enough for people to assume I don't identify as a woman. Pure insanity. Questioning own gender transition I miss when gender dysphoria was treated as an extremely rare condition and HRT being a last resort. It used to be acknowledged that anybody could have gender issues which could be resolved without HRT and surgery. I have no idea how it came to this. Desisted male yes, hijack your hormone system and risk serious health conditions later on because you did something unmanly slash like fashion typically associated with the opposite sex. I despise egg culture. It reinforces stereotypes, ironically leads to people invalidating other people's identities and is a flimsy foundation to base your whole identity around. Original poster, desisted female I hate it too. What upsets me the most is that these are the same people who claim to be progressive. In what world is you, a man, had a single feminine urge so now you might as well be a woman not regressive AF. Desisted female exactly. And also painting nails has nothing to do with actual womanhood. That's the patriarchy. So, they're so far behind that they think that painting nails is what makes a woman. Dash original poster, desisted female absolutely. I didn't mention that the guy stitched a girl's video where she was all I love being a girl. Look at my acrylic nails, earrings, etc. And I'm like. Those things have nothing to do with being a girl. D trans male it's extremely regressive. I'm under the impression that the far left doesn't differ so much from the far right, except instead of trying to convert you and pressure you to conform, you are getting medicalized with cross-sex hormones instead. I absolutely despise wokeism and avoid it like the plague. Dash original poster, desisted female god I can't agree with this more. Some of them went so far left they looped back around to being conservative. The trans female the gender ideologues are much worse than conservatives. They sterilize, mostly homosexual, children and prevent them from developing a sexuality and an orgasmic response, ever. They have seen the evidence and heard the testimony from gender specialists that this is the outcome of early puberty blockade. They choose to lie to people rather than admit this is happening. I heard one activist claim that puberty blockers can't possibly cause permanent anorgasmia in male children, because teen girls and CAIS women are able to mature sexually without testosterone. Therefore, a male child put on puberty blockers should also be able to mature sexually. The thing is, Women including CAIS women have an estrogenic puberty at the appropriate age, while trans kids endure years of zero sex hormones. 
The male children on PBS don't have estrogen. They have nothing throughout a phase that evidence is now suggesting is a crucial developmental window for sexual maturation. I have never before seen people so willing to harm children as these activists. They could at least advocate for early cross-sex HRT if they really wanted to minimize the risk of harm to children. After all, they claim transition is necessary and beneficial to kids, so why not advocate for the protocol that wouldn't result in anorgasmia? Well, the reason is that they know people would reject such a proposal. It can't be successfully argued. This isn't about the kids' best interests, it's about locking these kids into transition. It's a tactical move to establish that trans identification is innate, therefore begins young and can slash should be treated young. Whether the early PB blockade is good for the kids or bad for the kids is irrelevant. It serves the purpose of showing that the kids are trans, which is used to argue that trans identified adults are trans in an innate way, too. I will never understand why people are so evil and why such evil people found their way into trans rights advocacy, without being summarily shown the door by trans people as a community. I mean, I understand why. I know what this implies about the trans community as a whole. I know what it demonstrates about people in general. I just hate it and hate to think about it. D-trans male yeah, I hate the culture of doing that. A friend of mine called some guy an egg for wearing makeup once. It's crazy how we've regressed so much in like a decade in how gender roles are viewed. But I guess there's basically nothing else left to determine being trans than gender roles, since dysphoria isn't a factor anymore. D-trans female I love being butch and masculine, but everyone around me was telling me that it meant I was a man. Desisted female yet. This whole egg thing on social media seems to revolve around telling people they're another gender because they're GNC and it pisses me off. Because me, at the age I'm at now, can easily see through the bulls. But there are so many teenagers and younger people who are super susceptible to it. And then they get HRT slash surgery and irreversible changes to their body because of it. And when we call this stuff out, they act like it doesn't even happen. Next post, titled, I wish I never took hormones. D trans female I hate my facial hair, I hate shaving. I used to have no body hair and now my stomach and legs are so hairy. I've already spent over $1,000 on laser hair removal but I'll always have to shave my face because some of my hair is blonde. I wish I listened to my parents about the hormones, they told me not to do it. But I was stupid, and I wanted to grow a beard. I didn't know that facial hair would look awful on me and it's unbearably itchy. I was only 19 I shouldn't have been allowed to make irreversible changes to my body. But at least people still perceive me as a woman most of the time, but I still haven't told my family I don't want to be called him anymore because it's embarrassing. But it's also embarrassing when someone in public calls me she and then my family call me he. Everything about this is so embarrassing I just want to crawl in a hole and never come out or leave the city and never come back. I wish I could go back in time and smack my 19 year old self in the face and tell her to not take those damn hormones. From the comments. D trans female it's wrong of doctors to inject steroids into young girls without a second thought. Don't only hold it against yourself. Next post, titled, Are any other FTMTF receiving resistance from others through their detransition? Detrans female I will clarify. Basically, since my detransition I have had, 1. My uncle and aunt suggest I pick a bigender or unisex name. Even though I've legally changed my name back. 2. A gynecologist tells me she couldn't treat me and suggest I see a trans healthcare clinic because I'm in between due to having been on testosterone. 3. My father, while shopping for clothes, tells me before we ask the store employee something, that he's going to refer to me by he slash him pronouns as not to confuse her, since I'm shopping in the men's section. 4. My grandmother was already resistant from the start, said you were growing into such a nice young man, when I told her I was detransitioning. 5. My therapist, who I finally left for another that has more awareness of detrans issues, who would suggest I might be non-binary. Or when she would relate my experiences to trans experiences and give me advice she had given them. 6. My primary care physician telling me, when I told her I was detransitioning, that I shouldn't not take testosterone just because I'm worried about the health effects. That everything in life has risks and that sometimes we have to take those risks to be authentic then said I should go back to Howard Brown to talk to them. 
she eventually stopped that but still saw my detransition as a retransition to another gender and suggested I might be gender fluid. 7. My dad always telling me you just need to send the right signals when I talk about my frustrations with not being read as a woman by others. This is usually followed up by him telling me to just get the earrings eight. And when talking to my grandmother about dresses because I was going to a wedding, and I was joking about how it's easier to wear a dress in 90 degrees weather than it is to wear a suit. She said when you decide to become a girl again, you could too 9. Plus, during dinner, I think a few days ago, my grandmother called me he in conversation and my father said she, then grandma said he, she, it, or whatever. When I confronted her about how it wasn't okay to call me it, she said she was just joking. And to top it off, I'm still gendered as male in society, when people meet me slash etc. Still haven't been seen as a woman unless I tell people my name or introduce myself as one and you wonder why I had that short period of retransition, FTM, before I realized it wasn't going to solve my problem, living as a male passing butch detrans woman. The only detransition right now is that I've mentally come to terms with my sex, legally changed my name and gender markers back. Everyone else still treats me as if I'm a guy or trans. Even when they know I'm female and detransitioned. Basically, socially not being treated any different from when I was FTM. From the comments. Questioning own gender transition I'm sorry, these people have all treated you really poorly. I don't see how a gynecologist could genuinely say that a female who took tea is in between, the sexes. It's scientifically inaccurate. Sure, maybe they don't have experience with women who have been on tea but that's a gap in their knowledge, which doesn't mean you should look for a different specialty. Maybe reduce the amount of contact you have with family members who are not there for you. I don't know what you could do about your presentation that will make you look less like a man. Laser hair removal? More femme clothes? But you should be able to wear whatever you like. Maybe for now it could be worth it wearing slightly more femme fashion than you prefer if it signals to others that you are a woman? As time progresses maybe you'll lose some of your mask features and can dress more butch and still be read as female. All the best to you. D-trans female I'm sorry your family isn't supportive, sad face, my grandma was beyond happy when I told her I was detransitioning, and the rest of my family were neutral. Our families really affect how we move in the world so it's completely understandable this is rough for you. I hope it's just a matter of time on their side and they'll be more supportive later on. Next post, titled, Friends Mad I'm Going Back to Old Name. About a year ago, I changed my name and socially transitioned to non-binary but have decided that I want to detransition. I told my friend that I'm going to go by my old name, and she got upset as if that's a bad idea. She shouldn't get to choose what I'm going by. Nothing wrong with me finding myself again. Anyways I'm very happy to finally be going back to female. From the comments. Detrans female you'll have that, some people get it in their head that detransition is a bad thing and that you're regressing into a S-type person or something. Don't let their own issues stop you on your pathway to self-acceptance and growth, they will wise up sooner or later. Desisted female she's being unsupportive and you deciding that you want others to call you by your birth name is has nothing to do with her. Is she also trans identified? Maybe she sees it as a personal slight against herself and her ideals. Next post, titled, Self-Chosen Fate. D-trans female I feel sad. There are so many feelings. I want to throw away everything. I want to cry all day long. I do not want to interact with anyone, because Noon understands. I do not understand myself. I do not know why I did that to my body. I don't know whether it will be alright again at some point. I still do not know how to accept everything I have done. Everything feels completely messed up. I hate being that negative but at the same time I want to process that stuff, but I just do not know how. It seems like I am not moving forward. I am always ending up hating what I have become. I really don't know how to live with all of that. I don't know how to find peace and ease with myself. At the same time, I feel so ridiculous because I am the one that did that to my body, and I am the one now telling you how fed up I feel. Self-chosen fate someone said to me the other day, and it is true. On some days it hurts so much that I feel it not only in my stomach and head, but in my whole body and it is exhausting, it hurts. 
my mind pulls down my complete body. I do not know whether time will heal anything here, or whether time will feminize my body in ways that I can live with I am sorry, but can someone hear me? From the comments. D trans male I hear you, and I know you know this, but I want to remind you that you were very young when you made the choices you made. Too young to be blamed for it? You were pushed. You didn't make the decisions you made all alone. You thought you were doing what was best for you. You couldn't have known. It wasn't your fault. You don't have to blame yourself. I don't blame you and no one else should either. We have to believe it's going to get better. Socially trans, regrets medical transition I hear you. We all want to feel loved and validated. There's a marketing machine surrounding a cult that tells us we can find that validation and love if we just take the hormones or have the surgeries. We buy into it. We want to be loved. We want to be validated. We want to be accepted. Then we realize that we made a mistake, that we were sucked into a cult, that we aren't what the cult told us we were. We have to step back and reassess ourselves, which is painful. It hurts a lot, and it is intense. You're not alone in your journey or in your heartache. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. The hardest part is coming to terms with the mistakes we made and facing the reality of those decisions. Admitting you were wrong is never easy but it's the first step. Admit you were wrong and allow yourself to move forward. Rediscover who you are and live your life on your terms. Stay strong. You're valid and we hear you. D-trans male I hear you. You made a decision but not in isolation. Everyone who claimed to understand and empathize with you affirmed that these were the right choices for you, whether directly or indirectly. It wasn't their fault, they were doing what they thought was right for them. It wasn't your fault, you were doing what you thought was right for you. I played my part in it, as I'm sure we all did. We thought we'd found the secret on how to be happy and we were excited to share it. It's easy to throw around the word choice but whoever said that to you should realize how much of a callous and ignorant thing it is to say. All of our peers made this choice, all of our peers recommended this choice, the adults and medical professionals in our lives diagnosed us with a debilitating, lifelong, unmanageable condition and then all in unison everyone repeated that the only cure, the only way to survive, was to make this choice. The accumulation of everything you learned, lived and breathed was that the two options were transition or suicide. Your self-chosen fate was the decision to live, in the face of a false reality pulled up completely around you. You were at the top of the mountain and now you're suddenly, inexplicably back at the bottom, looking up and unable to see where you were or how to even begin getting back there. From this vantage point it will look insurmountable. But you've done it before, and you can do it again. Turn around and behind you is another climb, one that isn't marked with gender, pronouns, or passing. One that is simply labeled as you and it is a much more forgivable ascent because it doesn't require anything of you that you don't already have. There is no time limit for this one, tackle it when you feel ready. You will be someday soon xx, original poster, the trans female thanks a lot. I know that you are right. Really beautiful, encouraging words 3 the sub is a blessing. I never wanted to blame anyone, neither myself, nor anyone else that made decisions on my transition. I know that I was always really lucky with the people that were and are around me. And I know that I tried to do my best to find peace with myself, but that it was the wrong direction. Thank you. This video's last post, titled, The Times I Had Self-Doubt During Transition D Trans Female I ended up looking through saved Snapchat photos, most of them being when I was trans, 13 to 22. And I came across the few moments over those years where I was heavily self-doubting if transition was right. I'd do some makeup and try on female clothes, as some kind of test which now, does not make much sense on how that would prove anything. I remember during those tests I felt so uncomfortable, and everything looked wrong. So obviously I came to the conclusion that I should keep transitioning, because it's so clearly the right choice for me face with rolling eyes. Not sure what the point of this post is, other than finding the humor and frustration in my past self's naivete I suppose. Does anyone else have any similar experiences? And for those questioning right now, the transition at first most likely will be very uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean it's wrong for you. But the benefits long-term health and self-acceptance wise are priceless.
I am a completely different person from who I was two years ago, and for the better. From the comments, D trans female I identified as trans from 13 to 23. Started with hormone blockers when I was 14. That was when first doubts came up, but I would not listen to them, especially because blockers did change my appearance already to a degree where I felt really uncomfortable and thought there was no going back, that I had to move on. Then there was this dream that appeared all six months in which I sat in front of the mirror, looking at myself with long hair, as a girl again, being happy. It took me ten years to start listening to myself and escaping from that unhealthy mindset, D-trans female I want to add that blockers did not only change my appearance, but I also felt more depressed and more confused and in despair when I started. That led to me seeking more desperately for answers and finding them in moving forward in my transition. Crazy that I was convinced that transitioning would be the right decision and not listening to those doubts I obviously had. That will be all for this video. Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. End.